19, but she meant 419. Oh, I'm sorry. Everybody come and let
because this is my first year. I promise you, if you carry him to the Lord, he will take care of him. Yes, sir. Uh, pray for our leaders in Washington. Pray for them. We also need to pray that we accept whatever God does. Whoever God puts in there, for whatever reason, we need to accept it and ask God to help us to endure. Because we're living in the end times. And I'm glad. Because I'm ready. I'm ready to go. And it's one of these things that we see it happening and unfolding. And the Bible says that that should excite a Christian. You know, because at any time we're going to hear that trumpet. We're going to see the eastern sky split and we are gone in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Those that are not saved are going to stay behind and they're not going to like what's going to happen. So make sure your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Because if it is not, eternity is a long time to be wrong. And uh, as long as we're in heaven, those that have denied Christ will be in hell. Hell's a real place just as heaven is. I know a lot of people are preaching and teaching today that hell is not a literal place and it's it's not real. It's just, it's just your imagination. Well, what if you're wrong? Because Jesus spoke more on hell and the word of God than he did on heaven. Which tells me there's a literal place you don't want to go to it, I promise you. All hearts and minds clear? Yeah. Yes, Ms. Shannon. She's been having a few problems with her blood pressure. Check them out. All right. All those that can and will, let's come on the altar. And we will take these to the Lord in prayer. You may not remember these next week or, or any time. So you know what? All you have to do is say, Lord, remember what was mentioned on Sunday? And then at that point, you can bring it to the Lord and pray about it. Go down and you can go ahead. Thank you. 
See, on Father's Day, we'll probably have 10 things over here. <laughs> but hopefully they're all nice, big, expensive. <laughs> That's what I told my wife. I was like, it's so hard to buy for ladies because we have so many. And, I, and when I start to buy, I don't know if any of y'all been shopping with me. I love to buy for other people. That's why I don't buy gifts for mothers at Hobby Lobby because the church would not be able to afford them. <laughs> So I go on Christian sites and stuff like that, and I, I find a little, little bit. So, how many more mothers do we have that haven't got one? At least four? I'm putting one to the side. I'll give it to her when she gets back. Yes. We will definitely have enough for them to have one. Because I got Miss Christine, Marilyn, Marsha, Angie. Uh, we got several that aren't here. And I want to make sure that they get one. Oh. <laughs> All mothers got something? Thank you. Thank you. Your face starts to blend. I want you to look at that chain that's on there. Remind yourself, that's the size, that's an actual mustard seed in there. So now you've got the actual size of what it is, even though the other night if you were here when I preached on it, I passed the bag around that I had in my office with different grains. But uh, I'm going to preach to you this morning on a mother that does not get spoken of very often in the Bible. Turn to Exodus chapter 2. Exodus chapter 2. I'm going to preach to you on the mother of Moses. The mother of Moses. You'll be amazed at what the Bible says about her. And some things that God revealed to me. Because every one of us that have kids wish that our kids would do more for God or where they need to be with God. But every one of us also have other things in our lives that are we willing to give them up? Are we willing to let them go to God so that God can have his way? If you got Exodus chapter 2, if you're able to stand, I'm just going to read the first 10 verses. You're probably wondering what her name is. I'll reveal that to you here in a little bit. And what it means. Because I was surprised myself when I started studying about Moses' and mother. So in verse 1 of chapter 2 of the book of Exodus, it says, And there went a man of the house of Levi, and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not longer hide him, she took him, or she took for him an ark of bulrushes, and dabbed it with slime and with pitch, and put the child therein, and she laid it in the flags by the river's bank. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it, and the child grew. And she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter. And he became her son, and she called his name Moses. And she said, because I drew him out of the water. Heavenly Father, we just come to you this morning wanting to tell you, first of all, we thank you, Lord, for our mothers. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to do something for them. And Lord, we ask that you would bless us today as we learn about Moses' mother and help us, Lord, to be more like her. Lord, if there be somebody here this morning that needs to let go, 
needs to, whether, whether it's letting their child go back to you and letting you take care of whatever that situation is, or maybe there's something in their life they need to let go of today, Lord, we ask that today would be the day that they would leave it at the foot of the cross. Lord, if there be one that's lost, we ask that the Holy Spirit would draw them so they could be wonderfully saved. We ask all of this, Lord, in your precious holy name that we pray. Amen. Y'all may be seated. You don't have to turn there, but Exodus chapter 20 is going to reveal the name of Moses' mother. And Amram, which is Moses' father, took him Jochebed. That is Moses' mother's name, spelled J-O-C-H-E-B-E-D, but it is pronounced Jochebed, like Yahweh. The first part of it is Yah. And it says, his father's sister to wife, and she bare him Aaron and Moses. And the years of the life of Amram was 137 years. Now, in Numbers chapter 26, verse 59, it goes on to say, And the name of Amram's wife was Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, whom her mother bare to Levi in Egypt. And she bare unto Amram Aaron, Moses, and Miriam, their sister. Now, this was a woman of courage and commitment. And do you realize that this is the only woman in the Bible, in Hebrew, where her name is almost the same because it starts out with Yah, for like Yahweh. And what her name means in Hebrew is Yahweh is glory, but it also means Jehovah glorified, or whose glory is Jehovah. Basically, everything goes back to God. It's, it's neat how these names are. In the living condition, you've got to remember, back in this day, they were killing all the male children. Okay, the king at that time was issuing a decree to kill all the male children. Now, they were working in harsh conditions at this time, harsh and rigorous. They were slaves working with brick and mortar. Listen, trials and difficulties are going to come our way. They're going to come no matter how we look at it. From every angle, something is going to happen. But I want to look at some things with her life to see if it helps you get through just like she did. Now, we got to look at the first thing with Jochebed was the trial of her faith. Listen, when she gave birth to Moses, she tried to hide him for three months, knowing that if they found him, they would kill him. So she did everything she could because she knew there was something special about this child. Now, at the time, she could not hide him no longer. She had to make a decision. What am I to do? Because she knew in her heart something was special about this child from God. She was unable to protect him any longer. Now, how many parents today feel like, you know, we want to protect our children. We want to do everything we can to keep them safe. But there's going to come a time and a point where you can't no more. Now, what did she do? She could have done anything, but she chose to put him in the most dangerous river known in the world today. The most dangerous, dirtiest river, the Nile River. She decided, now yes, Moses was the first basket case, okay? We already know that. But she sat there and she took, they they called them bulrushes, but they're also, the reeds, and they're papyrus reeds. Now when I looked up papyrus reeds, they says that they can grow up to 16 feet tall, and they're located near swampy areas of the Nile River. So what she did is she took them and she wove them into a basket and she used slime and pitch to hold the basket together. Back in those days, they made large boats from these same reeds and they do not sink as long as they did it right. Now, when bundled together, they say that these reeds float very high in the water and they're capable of holding heavy weight. So this is a three-month-old. I don't know how heavy he was. I don't know how big he was. He didn't have Twinkies like we do today and and other things and, and stuff like that. But I'm pretty sure he wasn't very small either. Listen, we're not made to carry heavy loads. Okay, I want to say this because I want y'all to get grasp this. Too many of us carry things God says to let go of. Listen to what 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Listen, we are not made to hold that. We are not made to carry that. We're made to let it go to the one that can. And his name is Jesus Christ. Now, Jochebed is a God-fearing woman that took desperate measures to protect her child. Listen, instead of manifesting fear and despair, she had confidence and hope. 
she gave it to the Lord. She said, Lord, he's yours. Lord, I'm going to just lay him here. And I'm going to ask that your will be done because I can't hide him no more. I can't protect him. But you're going to do something special with him. So to save Moses' life, she gave him back to God. Notice what I just said. To save his life, she gave him back to God. Listen, many of us have dedicated our children maybe when they were younger. The Bible says that if we do that, you know, they're his. They belong to him anyway. Listen, we belong to God anyway. If God decides to take us early, young, old, it don't matter. It's his right. He made us. He created us and we belong to him. We have to honor that. We have to understand that God knows what's best. We may not understand it. We may disagree with it. But you know what? God's not going to do anything mean to his children. So let's look at the foundation of her faith. Okay. In the midst of her trial, in the midst of what's going on right here, she had faith confidence and hope that God was going to take care. Do you have that when the trial comes? When your storm is hitting you, I'm glad Michelle sung that. Are you able to ride it out or are you trying to paddle to get somewhere else? Are you trying to get out of the storm or are you, are you just going to just sit there and understand that God's in control? Listen, she had already been told that the children of Israel were not going to perish. How did she know that? Well, in Genesis 12, 1 through 3, It says, now the Lord said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make thee a great nation and I will bless thee and I will make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. She already knew through her child everything was going to be okay. She just didn't know how. She just trusted God enough to say, God, I'm going to let him go. I'm going to give him to you. She already knew that there was bondage in Egypt because she knew things were going to happen like this. In Genesis 15, 13 through 14, she was told, And it said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs and shall serve them. And they shall afflict them 400 years. She already knew there was problems coming. Listen, God has told us throughout his word what we're to expect. And some people today are going, I can't believe this is happening. We need to pray for peace, peace. No, you don't. We already knew it was coming. We knew trials and tribulations were coming. Plus, he gave us a scripture in his word that says, all those that love God shall suffer persecution for his namesake. And we get upset when something happens to us. The Bible told us it was coming. Why are we not prepared? Why do we not have faith the size of that little seed that y'all have today? Think about it. All we have to have is just that little bit. Moses' parents believed that God was going to preserve him and use him for a purpose. God does that to every one of us. He has a purpose for every single one of us in this room today and outside these walls. But are we willing to allow him to do that? Are we willing to allow him to use us? Hebrews eleven twenty three says, By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents, because they saw he was a proper child. And I love this. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Listen, why do we fear things that God tells us not to fear? The Bible says not to fear what man shall do unto us. The only one we're to fear is the one that has dominion over your soul and your body. And that is Jesus Christ. But we give the devil way too much credit when we fear him. Remember I told y'all, when he stands up to come at you, you stand up and run back at him. And you wave that word of God like a slingshot, just like David did with Goliath, and say, not today, Satan. You're not having my children today. You're not taking my family today. You're not going to take what belongs to God today. Are we willing to have that faith? Are we willing to have the faith like Jacobet had? You know, the faith, not, not seeing what's going to happen, just trusting that God's going to take care. See, the problem with us is we want to see it until we believe it, and it should be the other way around. It was by faith that he was hidden, not by fear. She did it by faith, not by fear. So let's look at the exercise of her faith, something that you and I need help with at times. We say we have faith, but when it comes time to put it into practice, (laughs) we don't back it up very well. We tell God we love Him, we trust you, and God puts a test on our lives, and if you're like me, you end up failing it. Now, Jacob had such a deep abiding faith in the trustworthiness of God's Word 
that it drove her to act. We were talking about that in Sunday school this morning. It doesn't matter how much wisdom and knowledge you have, if you're not acting upon it, then you're basically wasting your time. We can read all of God's Word and know everything that His Word says. But if we're not putting it into action, then what are we benefiting from it? The Bible says not to be hearers of the Word, but to be doers of the Word also. Jochebed knew that God expects us to do our part. God will not do for us what we are able to do for ourselves. Listen, He, he may hold your hand, He may carry you, but there's going to be a time that He's going to drop you right on your backside for you to get up and walk. There's things that we have to do. We can't, or we can go to God and pray, but if we don't have faith in what we're praying, why are we even talking to Him? The Bible says to come boldly to the throne of God, knowing that you have faith that what you're going to pray about, God's going to do. If you don't believe He's going to do it, then don't even pray about it because you're just wasting your time. God wants to hear belief. He wants to hear sincerity, knowing that what you're asking for, He is going to take care of it. Listen, we are to do all that we can for our child. And then we are to place them in the sovereign hands of the Almighty God and leave them there. Notice what that said. We are to do all that we can for our child. And then we are to place them into the sovereign hands of the Almighty God and leave them there. Trusting He will do what He wants. And we have to accept it. Whether we like what, it, what He does or what He doesn't do, there's always a reason. Remember, God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. But I always go back to Romans 8, 28. That said, everything's going to work out for His good. I've seen where parents have lost children. And through that, people have gotten saved. Might not have ever gotten saved if God didn't take the child home. Think about it. God knows what He's doing. God also says the death of His saints is something He glorifies at. Because why? He's wanting us to be with Him. We're going too soon. I promise you, sooner than later, we're going to be with God. And you better be ready. You better make sure that you have that faith like Jochebed had and be able to make it there. Listen, Moses' mother didn't say this. She didn't go, I'm going to throw the child into the river. If he's God's man, God will somehow save him. She didn't do that. You know, that's called fanaticism. So many people have that extreme beliefs that lead to unreasonable or violent. We see that with people all the time. Listen. I have faith and I trust God, but I am not holding a rattlesnake. <laughs> God says not to be stupid. That's called fanaticism. You ain't going to have me take one. If you do, I'm going out the other door. But we still got to have faith. God ain't telling you, well, trust that God's going to protect you. Jump from the roof and see. Come on. You're going to find out real quick how smart you really were when you hit the ground. That's not how we're to treat God. That's not how we're to do our faith. Look at the response to her faith. This, this, is, this is one thing when I was studying this, I was like, wow. When we finally come to the realization in our lives that we're ready to give it back to God and let it go, God's already at work. I want you to see something here. God began to move upon the heart of that pagan daughter, Pharaoh's daughter. Okay, back in those days, Inside the palace, they had two to three bathhouses that they could bathe in. Why in the world on this day at this time did she choose to go down to one of the most dirtiest and the most dangerous river to bathe in? Nobody knows. She's never done it before. It's never been recorded in the Word of God that she went down there and did that before. This was the one time she went down to the Nile River to bathe. And you think about it. She did it at the right time, too. Jochebed had already placed Moses into the riverbed. No, she placed it in a bunch of... Now, think about it. There's critters that hide in those areas. Okay? And the Nile River is known to have the largest crocodiles in the world. Whether they had them back then or not, I don't know. But I'm pretty sure they had something there that was probably not good for us to be playing with. And yet she put Moses there. And left him. Now there was something supernatural and marvelous taking place here. I want you to think about this. Imagine what could happen in your life right now if you had faith like Jacobet. 
when you were willing to let it go? Whatever it is. It might be a child. It might, your child might be not living right. Your child might be away from God. Maybe it's your grandchild. Maybe it's your niece, your nephew. Maybe it's you. Maybe God has been telling you to do something and you're not letting go. You have to make sure that you are where you're to be with God. God was responding to a mother who dared to trust in him. Now, there's something about verse 6. It says, and when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. Notice what that verse says, because it didn't say she had compassion on him until Moses began to cry. Have your cries awoken the master today? Listen, God will have compassion on those that come to him with a broken spirit and a contrite heart. God wants us to be real with him. He knows when we're being real with him. God made sure that the baby wept at the exact time for somebody to come and fetch him. They never came down to bathe in this river. Moses' mother did not even know that they were going to be there. All she knew was God was telling her to let Moses go and trust him. Now, God probably hasn't told any of y'all to take your child and put him next to a river and walk away and leave him. I hope not. Um, But you know what? Whatever God's told you to do, you better do it. God probably has said, would you please give me your child and let me take care of him? We got to let him go. We got to say, God, here they are. God, I'm going to trust you with whatever you decide to do. God's purpose in redeeming Israel depended at that very moment on the pitiful cry of a little baby. Think about it. Moses was the one that brought the children of Israel out. What if Moses would have died on the side of the Nile River? Where would we be at today? A lot came from Moses. Think about it. Trace the lineage. Children of Israel. Tribes. Jesus. Does that say anything? Came from the family of David. You know, traced all the way back. What if Moses would have never made it? The cry of the little child arouses the maternal instinct of Pharaoh's daughter, and she spared him, knowing that all the Hebrews were supposed to be killed. All the Hebrew boys were supposed to be killed. But his cry caused her to want to be a mother, because she couldn't be. She wasn't a mother at the time. Has God heard your cries over your children? Mm. Maybe your cries at that right moment will move God to act on your behalf. Finally, I want you to look here at the reward of her faith. In verse 9, it says, And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. This is how, this is how God works, and I, and I love this. Jochebed gave away Moses to God, saying, God, here he is, he is yours. Only for God to turn around and have her nurse her own child, raise him for four years, and get paid to do it. Think about that. She wasn't even thinking about that. She had nothing in her mind about, I want, I'm going to get my child back. I'm getting my... No, she put her child there, not knowing if she would ever see him again. And yet God already had a plan and work. All he wanted was her faith. All he wanted was her to be willing to let him go. Kind of sounds like a thing with Abraham and Isaac, right? God wasn't going to allow Isaac to die. He just wanted to see where Abraham truly was. And once he realized where Abraham was at, he saved Isaac and then saved the whole nation. Same thing he did here with Moses. I thought it was pretty funny that she was even paid to take care of her own child by a pagan woman that had nothing to do with Hebrews. Man. I think that that was just ironic. Maybe y'all ain't getting it. I know I am, but she was known as what, in those time periods, was called a wet nurse. They were the ones that would nurse the children for the mothers so the mothers didn't have to. Well, there's no way she could have nursed them anyway because she wasn't pregnant, so she didn't have anything to be able to nurse the baby with. So a lady that was Moses' sister that Pharaoh didn't even know who this person was comes up and says, I know somebody that can take care of that child for you. (laughs) God had it all worked out. 
that the family was still able to be part of the family. Hebrew, or Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Think about that. According to the power that worketh in us. That's God. Why do we not bring our cares to him? He says he can do exceedingly abundantly all that whatever we're even asking. And anything we can even think of, God's going to do better. He's going to take care of it, but we have to let it go. 1 Peter 1.7 says, For the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perished, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. You know, another great example of somebody enduring trials and tribulations was Job. We all know the story of Job. He is a great example of faith during a trial. He had his low points, but he always expressed his confidence in God's faithfulness. Listen to what he said in Job 19.25. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Listen, we're going to face trials. We're going to face tribulations. We're going to have problems within our families. We're going to have problems with our own children. The question is, are we giving them to God or are we hiding them from God? Think about that. When we don't let something go and give it to God, we're hiding it thinking we're going to take care of it. God, I don't need you. God, I got this all figured out. You're just going to mess it up if I let it go. That's sometimes how we feel. It should be the other way around. If we hold on to it, we're going to mess it up. We're going to make it even worse than what it was in the beginning because why? We just didn't let it go. Remember, the children of Israel's 11-day journey turned out to 40 years because of disobedience and not listening. God is still on the throne. He is behind the scenes working everything out for our good and His. We have to trust Him. We have to have the faith like Jochebed had. We have to calmly trust in the Lord even though we don't see a way out. She could have never known that Pharaoh's daughter was coming that day to bathe. She could have never known that she was going to be asked to come and nurse him and take care of him. Because you know what? She could have been killed. If they would have known that she was Moses' mother, they would have killed her. If they would have known that Miriam was Moses' sister, they would have killed her. But God kept all that... Con they didn't need to know. All they needed to know is that she was a Hebrew and could take care of this Hebrew child for this pagan woman when it wasn't even her child. But because it became her child, God used that to save an entire nation of people. We must put on the shield of faith and believe that God is sending trials to prepare us for a greater blessing. Our trials are going to make a blessing. But we have to have that shield of faith. That shield of faith blocks all the fiery darts from the enemy. All those darts are going to hurt us. It's going to steal our joy, kill us. Jacobed's experiences shows that mothers and fathers as well need to be flexible and creative, especially in difficult times. Don't be so stern that you're not willing to let go. Don't be so hard-headed that you're not, you're not willing to say, God, you know better than I do. God, here I am. Lord, here's my problem. And Lord, when I give it to you, help me not to take it back. Please don't let me take it back. Remind me that you've got this. Remind me that you've got this under control. Lord, help my unbelief. Jacobed stands as a reminder to parents never to lose faith that God will work in your child's life. Listen, she did not see Moses become what God intended. She died before Moses became what God wanted him to be. But how wonderful it is to understand that even after we aren't here to pray for our children, that God continues to answer our prayers. How do I know that? Proverbs 22.6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Are you training them up in the way they should go? Now what that means is in the Lord. Training them up in God. Trusting and praying that even when you leave this earth, your prayers that you had been saying, God's still going to answer them. Amen. That is a promise that you can pray back to God. Not to remind God, hey, this is your promise, but to remind you that God's got this. 
He said if we train them up and we do our part, they will come back. They may stray right now. And it may be the most gut-riching, heart-splitting thing that you're seeing happening in your life. Trust me, I know. But you've got to have faith to believe that they're coming back. Because God promised when we train them up and we dedicate them to Him that they are His. And listen, what belongs to His, He's keeping. You know, the devil may have fun with it right now, but they don't belong to Him. They belong to God. We must remember that our faith, that the trial of your faith planned to bring honor in the day when Jesus will reveal Himself. I'm going to close with this poem and a quote. This poem says, Go then, earthly, frame and, or earthly fame and treasure, come disaster, scorn, and pain. In thy service, pain is pleasure. With thy favor, loss is gain. I have called thee Abba Father. I have stayed my heart on thee. Storms may howl and clouds may gather. All must work for good to me. And here's a quote. There is within mothers an unconditional, almost desperate love for their children that begins often at birth and never ends. This love is universal and transcends borders, cultures, and continents. Like a fierce mama bear protecting her club, cubs, many heroic mothers are willing to risk personal suffering, injury, or loss to keep their children safe. So have you let it go? Have your cries awoken the master? Have you really pleaded your case to the one that can fix it? See, do you have that faith that Jacobet had? Would you be able to let your child or your circumstance or your issue that you're facing right now or yourself, are you willing to say, God, here I am. I'm going to lay it at the altar right now at your feet. And I'm not going to look back. When I get up, Lord, I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to pick it up when I get back and walk it back to my seat. I'm going to leave it there at the altar knowing that you are going to take care of it. I'm not going to talk about it no more. I'm not even going to dwell on it because, Lord, it's in your hands. Are you willing to have that type of faith? Because remember, when she did, God was already working the answer out. God already had the answer out to the place that she was able to raise her own son. And teach him about God. In those three to four years of his life, she taught him about God. Because she was his nurse. She was the one that took care of him day in and day out. And got paid to do it. Golly, could you imagine that? If y'all got paid to do it? I don't think she cared about the money part. I think she knew her payment was coming that she was with her child. She was telling him about God. She was t training him up in the way that he should go. She wasn't here to see him become what he became, but she, her prayers were still being answered. If everybody would stand. Listen, I don't know who this was for. I know when I studied it, it was for me. I, said, I was telling Brother, Brother Stephen yesterday when we were golfing about the message that God gave me, and he goes, oh, you're going to preach to yourself, ain't you? I said, yes, I am. I said, I already had to. Go through it when I was studying it, saying, ouch, oh me, Lord, oh me. Listen, we all know somebody that's not close to the Lord that, that we care so much for. Have we really let him go? Have we said, okay, Lord, I've done all that I can do. Now it's my turn to just let that thing, person, job, situation, whatever it may be, I'm going to let it go, Lord, into your hands. I'm going to put it right next to this river of life that we have here, which in this world, looks like the Nile because it's so bad. I'm going to put it there so that one day I can actually stand next to the river of life in heaven, knowing that you answered my prayers. Listen, as a song plays, if you need to come and pray, I want you to come this morning. Remember, it was the cry of Moses Does he know?